Well, good morning, folks. Here it is, the, the day after Equitana 2013. It was a fantastic show from many levels. And here we are at the Atlantic Congress in Essen, Germany. Mm -hmm. Just to wrap up, and we have Pat and Linda, but we also have run into good friend uh, Lorenzo, who has really been the star of, of Equitana now for many times. And Pat, I believe you guys know each other for a while. You go back a ways? Yeah. Last year we were talking uh, quite a bit and uh, I'm still trying to get him to come over to the United States and ride a cutting horse. <laughs> and if I believe so, you showed him a film of that yesterday yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah, I had tempted him a little bit to come ride this one special horse. Okay. I guess I don't know nothing about cutting. <laughs> <laughs> he's good to teach you. Yeah, he's good yes, to teach so. And he's got a spare hat. Too, you know, so he can have you go. But it has to be paybacks. So now he has to stand on a horse. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Linda, rather than have a, a Lorenzo, tell us, for those that would not know Lorenzo, tell us what you see and have seen over the years about Lorenzo's style with horses and his performance. Oh my gosh, just masterful. Just his um, relationship and communication with horses is so inspiring and uh, a little unconventional because he stands on horses, doesn't ride too much. A little bit, but um, having all those horses together and how much they listen to him and how creative he is, because we've seen you for many, many years when you started first with Reigns and then went on to Total Liberty. It's just beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. Mm. And, and mm. We talk about love, language, and leadership, and really Lorenzo is a living oh, example. As, he, and to, as you say, artistry as well. Artist. Yeah. So that is how the world knows you, uh, for your horsemanship and your style and your entertainment and really your charisma too, Lorenzo. But let's go behind. Uh, how did you get to be Lorenzo? What is your background? Can you tell us a little bit yes, how you yes. grew up? And well, at the beginning, I was um, <coughs> very attracted, attracted by the trick riding. So it was my, uh, like young people play football or tennis. <laughs> Me, I, I had one horse at home. And I wanted to make uh, voltage, so trick riding. And always, when I had holiday, I do. I'm doing this, so I get the balance mm. and how to fall off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I learn to fall off. And very fast, I, I wanted to create my own exercise. Mm. So it was always my my goal to make uh, my own things and not copy the the other. Of course, at the beginning, I I make like the other. Sure. But when I was 14, 15, I started to create my, my own exercise, jumping on the horse. And yeah, it's not like this. And your family, was your family in entertainment, in horses, in theater, or? No, no, no. Not my at all? mother is really um, passion, passionate, no, I don't know. Yeah, in passion. Passionate of horses. Horses, yeah. And show, but uh, nothing special. Well, that's fantastic. So at age 14 or 15, you started to develop your own style. Yeah. 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 And then when did you first get an opportunity to love? Obviously, your mother was enjoying your performance, but when did it start to grow? At what age when people started to notice? Well, uh, I live in an area in the south of France. Is there is a lot of tourists. So I first I make it for the tourists. Mm. Every summer I, I make show mm. and I start like this. So mm. the, the farmer take me to make an uh, attraction. Fantastic. <laughs> And uh, then I, I, I make in France when I was 16. Mm. I start to travel a little bit in France. Mm. And when I was 17, I start my first Equitana. Mm. And then the international, the, yeah, not only France, but German people start to know me. Wonderful. So at 17 was your first Equitana, and that, that was he, here in Essen? Or yes, it yes, was. At 17? Yeah, I was 17. Oh, you've grown up here. My goodness. <laughs> Can I ask how old you are now? Yes, 35. 35, fantastic. Tell me, you, you, as a young teenage boy, you started to practice your balance and, and your skills, just physical, but then with your, your, what you do, there's so much more to it, not just the human, but the horse. How did you start to understand the nature of horses and how they learn and all the things? You can mess it up pretty quick as we, as the, you know, horse lovers discover. Yeah. How did you learn more about their nature and their communication? At the beginning, it was only, uh I ride on a horse and just wa I want the adrenaline, you know, and I not, I don't know nothing about horses. <laughs> just I don't fall off. Yeah, I don't go to the teacher to, to learn, never. And <coughs> when I saw um, some people in the show doing Liberty, it so it was um, the, la, the fashion. Uh, fashion, yeah, 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 yeah. Ten years ago, <laughs> everybody start to make Liberty. <laughs> And then I say, okay, I must take this step. If I don't take it, uh, 
I will be lost maybe. <coughs> so I try to train myself to, to make liberty. Mm. And I find my own way and I can create new exercise and this push me uh, uh, again. Mm. So, it's mm. so we see the wonderful performance. But tell me, <coughs> as you were growing and learning, what were some of the challenges that you found? Did you seek other masters? Did you have people help you? Did you, get, did you have challenges along the way? Yeah, no. Of course I have challenge. <laughs> My challenge is never to copy people, so okay. to create things. My thing is to stand on the horse and jump in the fence. So <laughs> I try to develop my show in that way and doing new tricks all the time. Mm. So it's not so easy, but... Mm. And who has been your inspirations? You have obviously met many people in your travels. Who, who has inspired you from the past or the present? Who? Um, well, <laughs> I don't know many things about America. Yeah. Uh, so I saw in France it was uh, Pignon. Pignon, Jean-François yes. Pignon. Wonderful. It was the first one uh, doing uh, such a um, liberty work, and uh, yeah, I really like how we work. Mm. Um, or in circus, uh, I, I think it was not my my way. All they all they are in with the horse it was not like I want. Mm. Mm. But when in the show, yes, it was Pinion. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, um, in Pat and Linda's program, they teach people to understand horses, and they teach in in four areas. But one of them is liberty. And Pat, you have said you have seen, you have done many liberty, you have taught much around the, the world for people to understand the nature, but your comments to us about Lorenzo and how his performance, uh, you said they're as good as... Well, you know, the thing that Lorenzo is doing so good, first to get the horses to follow you, to go in the right order, this is, this is kind of number one and two. But then for the four to be as a group of one, and for the four to stay there until I tell you, well, I go do this, this is difficult. This is very difficult. And the other thing he's doing very well is the uh, standing on the outside of the circle and the horse's circle before him, instead of the horse's in weight. Well, you in the center and the four horses go around is one thing, but if you stand here, there are two circles. You stand in between, the horses go in this circle, then they come over here and go in this circle. This is, not, this is really uh, art artist mm -hmm. to be able mm -hmm. to do this mm -hmm. and then to do it in a big hall you know it, to do it in a circus ring you have the horses always I can touch you I can touch you mm -hmm. but there they can go and go and go or out on the outside in, outside in the camera mm -hmm. where you live it's uh, so tell me do you have because of your connection and relationship you do most of the horse work the warming up before every show do you is that something you do yourself oh yes o always I yes. do all, all myself yeah yeah and um, yeah because the problem in the show is that they are inside or in the box mm. during many days. So we have to keep them freedom in the, in the head. Mm. So they, we, they have to go out very often in the day and before the show. Mm. That they don't feel um, free, <coughs> free and yeah, too much powerful in the arena. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we lost the connection because we have only 10 minutes. So mm. these 10 minutes should be mm. intensive. Mm. Tell us a bit about your horses. We have seen the beautiful colors, uh, the gray horse. Tell us a little bit about their breed and where you find them, their age? Yeah. <coughs> so at the beginning I, I was um, with Kama horses. It's a special breed from the south of France. Very rustical horses, white. And they are like ponies, uh, not, not very high. Mm -hmm. And so when I, I grew up, I, I mixed with Lusitano. So I had Kama and Lusitano. Mm. And now I have only Lusitano. So mm. And I keep the, the white because of Kama. Sure, perfect. Mm. And, and there we saw you bring in some, at different stages you start with say four horses, you do some and then more come running in and then more come running. We never know if it's, how many good, how old are they? How, how old from youngest to oldest? Okay, so the most young was two and a half. So they are born at my home. And the oldest was 14. Wonderful. And the, the horse I stand on are very important. Yes. It's my security, so they have to trust me and I have to take care of the other. So they're your senior horses, they're your oldest ones, the ones you yes. stand on. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we, uh, we really appreciate what you do. We love, many people around the world love horses and it, it breaks down all international barriers and the way you perform, not only what you do, but the style with which you do it, you touch people's hearts. We have now seen you many times and really, Equitana is 
I think the best one of the best shows in the world but each time you highlight it and, and we just think it's it's wonderful how you do that and as you say as we say it's really inspirational to people how can people learn uh, Lorenzo more about you where could they learn more about you is it Facebook is it do you have what DVDs yes, tell us on the internet there are some some photo maybe not <laughs> so good uh, <coughs> but we have, we have make a book a book yes uh, two DVDs two, and it, in the DVD it's more uh, artistry or is it some teaching or a bit of both or yes one, one DVD is now uh, from 2006 but it's so I, 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 I am living with my horse mm, we so have that one in freedom in Kamal and walking in the night and and the second DVD is with uh, 12 horses so yes. because uh, in 2006 I had only four and six horses okay and then uh, I make more and more horses okay and what about a website where would people find you to learn more about Lorenzo where would they go yeah lorenzo.fr okay France. Okay, super. We'll look into that. Um, and just before we go, you have known Pat and Linda for a little while. What? When did you first hear of Pat? Were you France oh, and America a long way away? What do you know? Since many, of Pat? many years, we hear about the method. Yeah, Pat and Pat what do you hear? Tell I us. I didn't know, Pat Perley, but the the name, of course, is uh, very famous because uh, a lot of people don't want only to ride horses; they want to have a relation, and then they start to to be interesting in this way. So, of course. Uh, <coughs> you bring a lot for this uh, for these people, mm -hmm. and I think it's the the evolution of the mentality. Mm -hmm. And I you bring this in Europe. It was not before. It was only for the sport, sport, sport. Mm -hmm. I think you make a strong point because Pat, you've been doing this now for thirty something years. Thirty-two. And when he first started to say it about being nice to a horse and kind and use his psychology, it was unheard of. As you say, it was just about winning. Yeah. And I think you are very much a result of the philosophy that Pat and then Linda have spread around the world. And you are the vanguard, like the new generation that really can not only be excellent with horses, but have the horse be happy and excellent as yeah. well. And Linda, you talked about the expression of the horses when we watched. Yeah. And your, your work is always something I refer people to. You know, like our students, they learn the basics and then they say, now where do I go? And it's like, well, I don't know if Lorenzo teaches but watch his stuff and watch his shows because the imagination and the relationship is so clear in your work. Yeah. And every time I come to Europe, if we're at a show and you're there, I always want to see you because you're always so much better than the last time I saw, you know. I mean, it's always good. Wait till you're my age. But it's just, <laughs> there's more. Yeah, you'll you know? be so good. It's my house, <laughs> me, I am, Always the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Lorenzo, when we look into the future, you're 35 now and, and, and you if it, like the top of your game. How do you see the future? How do you want to develop yourself personally, your horses, your performance? What do you see in the future? Well, I, I don't know. This is the big question of the artist life. Because <laughs> uh, organizer want always new things. And yes, of course, mm -hmm. the age is going on. And this act is very... Technically difficult and physically also. Mm. Mm, mm. So of course maybe there is a limit. Mm. To, mm. I don't know. It's the big question. <laughs> but the good thing about an artist, he has his imagination, and that can always grow. And and I think given what we have seen, we are pretty confident the future looks bright. So. Yeah. Mom is yeah. So just just yeah. in the middle and. What about? <laughs> <laughs> tell him. Tell him not fall off. The <laughs> baton <laughs> No. Give him a kiss. J'ai encore, j'ai encore de, j'ai encore de l'équilibre. Give him a kiss. Give him a kiss. Non mais moi. Moi. Give Pat one too. Oui. Oh oui. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Perfect. Un gratif. <laughs> okay. Super. That's good. Thanks. I was living with horses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, and this is what I was doing, trick riding. But you started with one horse. Yes. And mum and dad was not into horses, so you had to talk them into letting you have a pony. No, they they had one, one couple of horses. Just the one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And my my uh -huh. my wish was to be a very good trick rider. Yeah. And when I was young, I, I saw a show in in Paris with American trick yeah. rider. It was a rodeo, and they were like, "Wow!" Was Pat in that? Uh. Were you in that? <laughs> no, but I got asked to come. <laughs> <coughs> now, uh, folks, if you can see Lorenzo live or his his DVDs, please see this man. He will touch your head and your heart and change the way you are with horses. We thank you both, uh, uh, Linda, Pat. 
and Lorenzo for being part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Super. Thank you.